many animals make things that are beauty, but I don't, we don't know if they step back and appreciate that beauty. We make art. We create, and that's something very unique to humans. And I'm saying there's something in that that is important to also tapping into these deeper layers of our mind and our heart and our, our body consciousness, our body memory about trauma and how do we work through those things so they're not stuck. Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We are at Consciousness Hacking's Awakened Future Summit. We are now gonna be talking to East Forest. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Yeah. I'm very excited. I like excited. that this is a music-centric show. <laughs> music-centric yeah. show with our centerpiece <laughs> as a piano. Yeah. Actually, East performed today in the morning and tomorrow. Yeah, both Two. mornings. Both it's sort of like starting the day with ceremony. It is starting the day with ceremony. It's and cool. It was just, it was a beautiful unlocking for so many people and a connecting for so many people. Um, a composer, producer, musician, and artist. Um, you know, we'll have, we have some of that B-roll from, from, um, from what you did this morning embedded here for people to view. Um, East, let's start with who are you and what do you stand for? <laughs> who am I as an artist? Because otherwise that's a, that's a bigger question I don't have the answer to. Uh, as, as an artist with the entity East Forest, which I suppose sometimes becomes my identity, I'm interested in how music can take us on an inner journey, how it can take us inside. And so I also am interested in the technology of ceremony and how we can use ritual to also do the same thing. So sort of an inner journey through music and ceremony and bringing those things together. And that's just something I've been interested in for a long time because I had experiences with music that I think many of us have had where we might have stumbled into mystical states, whether it's with a psychedelic or through meditation or just whatever, ecstatic states. And I didn't have any real guidance or teachers. And so over time, about 10 years now, I've just been developing my own musical language that works for me. I think it works for some other people now, it looks like too, but it's just what works for me and I wanted to find reliable ways to get into those sort of infinite mystical states. And so I'm very interested in psychedelic assisted therapy and how the role of music plays in that or how we can do it in a very public mm -hmm. setting like what you experienced this morning. We can do it, what I call East Forest Ceremony. That's essentially a mixture of concert and ritual. Mm -hmm. It's not complicated, but it can be very emotional because felt experiences are things that people can't argue with, whoever you are across the board. What you have is what you have. It's not something I told you or proselytized or an idea we put in your head. It's something you experience. So. You've created a musical language that's very unique. It is. Well, Please it, speak to us about it. It's unique because, it, you, so for those who didn't, don't know what it is, it's uh, sort of patient, right? And it's made with a lot of pianos and looping and nature field recordings and sort of, um, vocals that don't have a lot of lyrics, but there's vocalizations or singing, and samples of things that I also feel recordings of recordings, whether it's Ram Dass or something. But uh, what's unusual about it is it came out of 10, starting 10 years ago, me guiding psilocybin ceremonies. And I needed to find a way to guide people practically by myself for four or five, six hours. So that's where the looping came from. And that's where the slow progression of songs slowly building. And that sort of musical language and lexicon developed out of that because I was just sort of exploring just what works. What works to give people a positive journey? And so over anecdotal research over all those years, it was sort of just trying things. And of course, it's my own musical taste. Uh, uh, but I wanted to create a musical language that's like a new shamanic American path through music, one that speaks to our Western ears and one that is very understandable and approachable to the way we understand music in the West. So it's, it's comfortable, it's a comfortable space because we know set and setting is very important to having a, a good journey. And so just last Friday, I released an album uh, called Music for Mushrooms, a soundtrack for the psychedelic practitioner. And it's a five hour record from those spaces. As the first time I put something out that was specifically for psilocybin journeying, it was aiming it at the research studies going on. Oh. But of course, it could be used for anything. 
Uh, and I think it's time. I think it's time to put stuff out like that. And I'm also doing a record with Ram Dass over this whole year. Congrats. Yeah, where I recorded him last year. And that's also about tapping into wisdom because he's 88. And, and it's a reflection of the wisdom that maybe we put aside in our culture these days but is needed now more than ever, whether it's wisdom from plant medicine or wisdom from our elders, especially the ones who have a lot to say. So it's really beautiful. Oh man, there's so much here. The, the, the language that, that you've picked with your music, I, I, you have gave a couple descriptions, piano, yeah. field recordings, mm -hmm. I love that. And mm -hmm. it's when when you hear it, it it it, t it and you said the set and setting as well is mm -hmm. so critical to the experience. We had a dark space. We had some beautiful lighting choices. Um, we mm -hmm. had yeah. some. We had some. Was it sage that was burned before? A yeah, probably some sage and Palo Santo. Which is, is again, it's a set and setting. Yeah. Uh, and ceremony is a way of telling your mind and your heart and your body. Like, okay, this is important. So you're kind of priming your subconscious to say, let's get into those deeper layers and plant some seeds. And that's, that's, these are some of the tricks of ceremony. It's not voodoo. I'm saying we're actually working, we're getting into a trance state, which makes your unconscious, your subconscious more receptive to these ideas. This is sort of like hypnosis or something. This stuff works. And so we're doing these things. It's also very beautiful, but I think the beauty is something that makes us unique as humans. We appreciate that beauty. I mean, we are the ones that say it's beautiful, but that's like many animals make things that are beauty, but I don't, we don't know if they step back and appreciate that beauty. We make art, we create, and that's something very unique to humans. And I'm saying there's something in that that is important to also tapping into these deeper layers of our mind and our heart and our, our body consciousness, our body memory about trauma and how do we work through those things so they're not stuck. And so. I, I'm kind of exploring that in a brain body approach, but doing it in a very creative, artistic way. And it's something that, again, I've just sort of stumbled in for my own, it's my own interests. Uh, but it's, it's, it's kind of been a lab or an experiment and it's, it's been changing every time I do and we try new things and I'm excited to see where it could go. Because I feel like it's very universal and approachable. How do you argue with music? There's no lyric. Oh, he's you know he's talking about the the, the dolphin, the dolphin this or, or the uh, you know the crystal starship this. There's nothing like that. So I, I want it to be something anyone could walk into, and it's just cultivating emotions. And you prime people with the ambiance, like you said, and I and think they choose where they go in their minds and hearts. Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah. offering questions. What might you want to mm. give up in this moment? Is there something? Do you notice a feeling right now? Pay attention to it. Maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's just mm -hmm. setting the stage. And this took you all the way to the recent album recording. Yeah. Called Mushroom. M music for Mushrooms, music colon, for a soundtrack for the psychedelic practitioner. Nice. Yeah, which okay. is sort of a sister record inside the Ram Dass East Forest record that's been going on all year. Okay. Okay. Because Ram Dass is, you know, he, or if you don't know, he's the, I kind of call him the psychedelic grandfather of our country in a sense, him and Tim Leary. Uh, so they're all sort of related. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so now you have said a couple times throughout the conversation and part in the album itself written even for psychotherapy mm -hmm. sessions, mm -hmm. psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. Yeah. So then, what is your what is your perspective then on the role of psychedelics in the uh, in the experiences also that you curate in the awakening that is currently happening? Mm -hmm. Do you mean how do I see that maybe occurring inside the things I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Well, what I'm this East Forest ceremony concerts for obvious reasons do not involve or condone psychedelic ingestion during them because it's not legal, and moreover it takes a long time. So today we use cacao, and that was something we did here as a sort of a one-off currently for this because they wanted to try using something medicinal and psychoactive, and so we can go in that direction. I think at this point it's kind of things people are responsible and they, they do what's right for them. Hmm. Maybe people come in and they've eaten an apple or they've, tr they've ingested some form of psychedelic, but I can't hold that responsibility because um, it's not really that kind of space. It's only 
an hour and a half or two. It's not overnight uh, and that sort of thing. But the cultural winds are moving to a place where that might become feasible, actually, in the near future, where we really could, uh, in a public way, have a very strong container and hold space for people instead of being in the private shadows, as many people are as practitioners, but guide people in that way. Because as anyone knows who's worked with psychedelics, it's, um, it's very serious for me, and it's, it's, it's a, not a toy, and it can be powerful in any direction. And so I, take, I, take, I don't take that lightly. And so I'm, I'm not saying, hey, we should, oh yeah, you should come in and take psychedelics. I, I say the opposite. I don't think this is a space for that, but I'm also, you're all adults, and it's, <laughs> it's a semi-free country, um, but uh, and it's that's, not legal. That's the role, though, at your live performances, but then you did the recording for yes. those. Yeah, so explain that side. Well, the recording is, I know it is a bit of a juxtap juxtaposition, but the recording is for the work, and the reason it's five hours and the way it's designed and how it's connected and instrumentation and all, I, mean, I could go on and on to what's happening in the album, but it's specifically designed to help a, a psilocybin journey. Would it work for MDMA, LSD? Probably, but I know it's designed. Would it work for yoga? Would it work for studying? Yeah, I would guess so. But I'm just saying that's why everything in it is the way it is. Um, and I did that because I was looking at the music that's currently being used in a lot of the research studies because they've published the uh, playlists like at John Hopkins or Imperial College. I wasn't personally satisfied with them. And I know, the, I know that a lot of the music they're using and I saw reasons why I thought it could be better. And I also had my own experience. I had, I had a, my own personal solution. I just hadn't given it to the world. So I was like, n no one's putting out an album that's for this. And I thought I've kind of had this and I, I felt a calling, a personal calling. that This was the time to step out and offer that because I thought it could help, frankly. And you know, there's many ways to skin the cat. So it, it may be that you like some other music or that's all, that's true. There's not one way to do it. But I just found from my own anecdotal experience that this works quite well. And so they're having great results in these studies. I just thought maybe if you guys had a slightly better artistic, uh, nuanced look at the music aspect, mm -hmm. it could be even better. Better, yeah. They had, they'd, they'd covered a lot of ground. Yeah. And they'd covered, a, they did some studies on what, what works with the musical flow. Teachers But they never that. had like a musicologist that I know of, or musicians, artists, saying, here's, here's the kind of music, the instrumentation, the flow, the, the field recordings coming in, the nature sounds, all these things, yeah. they don't have that. How did you end up figuring out what the recipe was? Trial and error. Yeah. Yeah. Ten years of trying things and seeing, oh, that works, that doesn't work. And uh, in intuition and being guided by the mushrooms, I suppose. Mm. But that isn't very scientific. But just trying things and, and, and guiding people and seeing what works. And after hundreds of people, you start to see patterns and you start to learn. And uh, that's what you're experiencing on that record. It's kind of where I'm at after a decade. And then there's, like you said, some field recordings. What else is in there? It's mostly comprised of p different kinds of pianos, Fender Rhodes, angelic vocals, nature field recording sounds, some flutes, native flutes, melodicas, harmoniums, uh, some organ. And it's all just sort of looped. If you listen to it, you might think it was in a studio or that it's multiple people, but it's actually just direct feeded into a recorder. So that's why you don't, it sounds, you know what I mean? It doesn't sound live. But if, if you're a musician, you could probably listen to it and be like, oh, I can see how that was live, because it's building in layers. But that's also, again, that came out of the need for making music for psilocybin. And that was a need, but then it, it, it defined the type of music I made, but that was actually helping in the psilocybin experience. It's building slowly, the layers help. The repetition of certain musical phrases helps them train your brain. These are all things that help. And those are modern sound healing techniques combined with ancient sound healing techniques of things. If you go to a lot of ayahuasca or Lakota sweat lodges and so on, they're all using music as a central ceremonial vehicle and they're doing it in a way that is 
been done the same way for thousands of years. So you know, it's not like this guy just made it up tonight. It's like that's how they've been doing those songs forever. So you can learn what they learned, and you can see what they're doing musically. It's like okay, I'm gonna learn from that and try to integrate that into this stuff. What do we know about modern sounding science? About brain entrainment or binaural beats or different tunings, uh, things like that. And what were your personal experiences that led you, to even ten years ago, to being like, aha? I, I think like a lot of people, in I, I had uh, some psychedelic experiences young. My first one was with mushrooms, and I was nineteen. And luckily, and I say luckily because it was luck, it was positive, mm -hmm. profoundly positive. Yeah. And I went into a full ego disillusion. But I didn't know. I didn't know anything. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what had just happened. But I knew it was profoundly amazing, and I spent a long time trying to reverse engineer that, and and it kind of led to ma many mistakes, and some traumatic experiences, and then having some positive experiences with just music in general, and trying to and really trying to recreate that. But I thought maybe I just need to make music that I think would work for me in that space, and that's how this all started. It was just a tool for me. And then I started noticing it was working with other people and I had a friend, a close friend, who encouraged me to do circles and ceremonies and I probably wouldn't have done it without him. He literally put Love them it. together, yeah. Oh, that's so powerful. Yeah. The free occurring theme of the people that we sit down with is that they had influences like that that helped nudge them along and... Oh yeah, I great. mean, my partner sitting right here, I mean, I've, and you know, my partner before that, and all in friends, you have key people who are sort of there to encourage you and and because we're all just people we all get down and we all get discouraged and you're trying to do something that is not encouraged by mainstream society or really understood and there's a new wave now but it's still the fringe uh, yeah. but you can see it somewhat changing in the last year or two what is the relationship between the indigenous people on the planet and their thousands of years of practicing ceremony and the modern movement towards ceremony? Well, it's interesting because each drug has its own container for that that's different. So ayahuasca is unique because it's, it's kept retained inside it, the ceremony itself. You don't hear of people doing ayahuasca recre recreationally or outside of an ayahuasca ceremony. So it's really interesting that like, it's kept that as part of it. It never really left it. Um, and I think that's part of the reasons for its quote unquote success, because it's always in this ceremony as a setting, which helps it a lot. It's a very intense experience. And that keeps the, the music, the Icaros, at least if you're doing um, sort of an Amazonian style, not the UDV or something. But even that's a ceremony. Um, and then other drugs, it's, it's different. I mean, LSD was um, a creation, so I mean, that, that in some ways that doesn't count. Psilocybin had ritualistic use, but it's not as well known, and moreover, it didn't translate into Western society at all. So it's been, for all intents and purposes, completely recreational. So it didn't have a musical tradition attached to it. You know, it certainly didn't have any, I mean, most people that I talk to have experienced mushrooms in their lives at least once, if not many times, and almost none of them have sat in ceremony with them. And then those who do come out of it just be like, I had no idea of the depth, or I had no idea how far I could go with this medicine as such a profound teacher. Um, and so ceremony comes in different forms and shapes, I think with different plants and substances for different reasons and but nonetheless what you're what you're finding like with you know for instance peyote is inside a container but then maybe mescaline isn't always you know so I think they're all different but it the ceremony itself is a piece of technology that is simple and powerful and something you it, that can be done and is done outside of psychedelics all the time yeah. it's a form of ritual you know, writing a check is a ritual, brushing your teeth is a ritual, making your coffee in the morning is a form of ritual. So it's about intentionality, mm. it's about how you focus your consciousness, it's about set and setting and, and how you prime your, your body again. It goes back to what I said at the beginning about deciding what's sacred, because it's, you say it is. Really, what else is it, <laughs> right? It's just rituals about how you arrange things in a way. It's about saying this is different, this is not mundane. Mm. and. 
So it's about choice. The power of ceremony and ritual in is a technology. That's a really good line. And Absolutely, it's one of the yeah. original technologies. And it's a way of working with your brain. If you want to be really flat about it, but I like to say your heart too, but it's about working with your brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you could say working with your ancestors, all these things, but at, uh, if you wanted to stay very scientific about it, uh, it's a way of, of talking to these other layers of our consciousness. And, and working with them, and working with them. Because, you know, trauma can live in the body, right? So some people have to have difficulty, like, routing it out and getting over certain traumatic acts because it's living in the body or phantom pains and things like this. And these are just different ways that we can get into those places. So psychedelics also dig into these layers, too. Yeah. So combining it all into one soup makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. But a lot of people know this, but I think... Uh, Likewise with our show, it's such a multidisciplinary show, combining it into one soup is so... <laughs> yeah. Tasty soup. Yeah. One sausage. Um, yeah, but uh, with psilocybin, it, that just happens to be sort of my personal ally. And like I said, it didn't have that musical tradition, and it wasn't really couched into ceremony like some other things like ayahuasca so i was trying to coalesce that together a bit because i think it's it is a little more pervasive in some ways in american culture but also the word psilocybin has less baggage than lsd mm. that's why i think it's having some headway in like denver where it's decriminalized yeah, yeah. and so forth because i think many people don't even heard that word so they don't have the instant oh that story. Oh. It's a new story. New story. Yes. Yeah. But it's also been around in the subculture for a long time. And like I said, many people have experience with it, but not in ceremony. So they haven't unlocked in some ways the true power and as a tool. Mm. I wonder where else practices of ceremony and ritual can do what we need geopolitically to get through the exponential technology age. Maybe we ask a, that a question to you. What do you see with the artificial intelligence, synthetic biology age that we're going through? Where do you see the play of things like what you produce, how we can drive more unity and cohesion together? How do you see that working out? Well, I think about this usually from a music perspective. And I mean, we could, I don't need to go into the trends, I think, where the music industry might go with AI, because that's already happening with like mm -hmm. Spotify playlists, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, but what I think people are hungry for and will be more hungry for, and it's a symptom of the technological rise in AI, is for authentic experiences, for wisdom, and for connection to themselves or nature, the planet. Yeah. Or all the things we've had forever that we sort of feel more separate from through the use of technology. And so it's about decreasing that separateness. So I think the biggest one would be the connection to nature. And that's one of the reasons I like putting the nature field recordings that I record, like going out to wilderness places and bring it into the music, because it's a reminder. It's, a, it's also a reflection of yourself. And it's, it's a way of tapping in. You, we are the earth, literally, we're made of it, walking around, talking with eyes and ears. And for some reason, we, we have engendered this feeling of feeling not it. And matter of fact, I feel like I'm myself and you're someone else. And that's, mm. that's what we're kind of told. And, and that usually starts to cultivate feelings of depression and, and all sorts of problems, wars and so forth. So I think that reconnection to nature is something we had much more innately and it was more immediate for millennia. Yes. But since the Industrial Revolution, yes. particularly since the Information Age, yeah, yeah. it's been a rapid exponential decrease of our connection to that which is always around us. The water that we are in as fish. Yes. We've forgotten what the water is and we're like, where's the water? And so we need these ways of, to remind ourselves. And so for me, like bringing in that nature element, it's all about connecting back to what already is because uh, there's a solace in that. And I think so as the AI and all that increases, I think people will be more and more hungry for that. So potentially one of the best solutions, remedies to the 
issues that we're facing geopolitically and with exponential technology is to realize the water that the fish are in. <laughs> it's, it's to unpeel what's already there. It's to take off the clothes we're wearing that are hiding maybe our eyes because the answers we're looking for, it's not a new thing we're going to put on, it's going to things we're going to take off. Yeah, for sure. And I, I, we were just talking about with somebody about how s you can't, they love seeing the stars and how you can't see the stars in the big cities. And that was a recent change, right? With electricity, essentially. And then we started having pollution and light at night and you can't see, and most people don't see the stars much at night. And I live now in a place in southern Utah at 7,000 feet, which is one of the darkest places in the United States. I see stars from horizon to horizon that's and the great. Milky Way. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. But I just remember, like, that's how it was for everybody all the time, all forever. The time. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. And so there was a deep relationship. To, there's, like, the cosmos. Yeah. Just, like, wait a minute. Every night, this humbleness and questions and guidance and noticing, and that's been lost. And, again, that's recent. So... Uh, it's a sense of humbleness, but in that humbleness comes a sense of connection and probably a lowering of anxiety. And these, these are interesting times just because there's so much happening and changing in technology and we just don't know. <laughs> We're all in it together. You, you can't opt out anymore, right? It's not really practical yeah. to go to a cave. And, and even then, you, you probably wouldn't. You're still getting all the cell wires and all the, you know, you can't opt out. So you have to just figure out how we're going to get through this thing together. And we're all, we're all trying what we know how to do, one step at a time. So the psychedelics are powerful tools. I, and I think that can be useful now because we might not have 20 years to sit in an ashram and wait for the answers. It's like, what if you can try to get a few answers in, in one evening? And, and let's, so let's try to make that safe. And let's try to, what if you have some healing to do? You know, because there's been a lot of trauma from yeah. a lot of, a lot of stuff's happened. And a lot of people, and that just trickles down into families and abuse and yeah. all sorts of things. Yeah. It just like, it, it, there's a wave. It's like, a, we need to work again. We need to work with this wave to try to like, let that water flow down because it's so much right now. And so I think these, we're starting to wake up to tools that we've had for a long time. And now we, we maybe like this conference is thinking about how can we use the technology and combine it with this stuff and, and maybe make it almost like a surgical laser tool instead of just willy nilly uh, rolling the dice because that always doesn't work out. What would the surgical laser tool look like for you? For me, it's, it's through music and ceremony because uh, I, I, I think it's, it's using old tech in a fresh way in a, in a modern context. So that's why it's creating music that makes sense to us now, like modern music that's new shamanic American music, because okay. that doesn't maybe exist. And it's, it's something that's sort of uh, backed up by, you do some data, it's what, just what works. And so I think that's, what, that's just m kind of my angle with it. Because for some people it's biofeedback and wearable tech, but you could combine these things, you know, for sure. When you mention that a hundred billion humans before us were able to observe the cosmos and then the seven, eight billion alive now are unable to living in metropolises. Um, we're in many ways we're going through a process of remembering and reconnecting and like you said we have these suits on, these earth suits on and so to peel back some of the layers to see the way that we harmonize together and through things like your music as well. East, let's ask you about your name. Where did East Forest come from? That's easy, it was just my last name is Oswald, and that's German, and Os is East, and Vault is Forest. So it's just another way of saying my name. So there's not much of a, uh, it, it, I feel like it, it has a feeling to it, because it has the word East, which feels like Eastern, and Forest has a certain vibe, but that just hap it. I mean, I, I noticed it and I, was, I liked it. I like, oh, that'd be a great way to describe this music I was making. Yes. But yes. yeah, it's not like I pulled it out of some way, some branding <laughs> meeting. How, how does one go about renouncing their birth name? 
and going with the new identity because I know several people follow some suit like that and it's hard for others uh, to make the transition. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me, I don't identify as East Forest. I mean, some people call me East or East Forest and it's fine, but I, I did take on a new name recently and that was Krishna. My name is Trevor, my birth name. And I did that though, it's sort of easy for me because it was given to me and by someone I really respected. So it's like, it wasn't like I decided that or I didn't have some journey where I was like, I want to be called Krishna. It's more like someone says, you know, if I were to give you, I'm giving you a spiritual name and it's Krishna. And it was someone I couldn't really argue with. So I'm like, okay. Now I could just have that, but I thought it was an opportunity to identify sort of with a new pair of clothes. And it was a really beautiful opportunity at 40 years old to say, what if I tried what it felt like to identify what I think that name means? What, what would that feel like? Yeah. And it was an opportunity to step into something larger that maybe I didn't feel worthy or I didn't feel adequate. Or I, I had all the other baggage with the other name. And I didn't, I'm not throwing anything away. And that's what's fun about it too, to recognize it's just a name, it's just words. It's almost just like, hey, call me that. And you're like, okay. <laughs> Most yeah. people don't care. Yeah, so yeah. it really is just about how it makes me feel. And it helps me step up to the plate in a way that is mm. probably just going to be more loving. And, and so it, it's just a way for someone, he saw in me uh, something larger than I saw in myself. And that was just being, and he, by doing that, he was being very loving. Mm. And that was amazing. Helps you step up to the plate. I like that. There's still a lot more to discuss. Let's ask you two quick questions on the way out of the show. The first question is, are we in a simulation? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If, it is, if we are, it's a really good one. It's, I don't think so. I really don't. But I know some people have argued that. It's an interesting argument. And I wouldn't say it's impossible. Uh, but my heart says no. And if it's true, I'm going to be a little heartbroken. <laughs> but either way, the experience I'm having here is so incredible and rich that it still feels important to me. And I would say then what's the, inside, what's the simulation inside, right? And then the and, next question. Yeah, the ahead, simulation or, or are we still, is it still God or is it still the universe? I mean, I think a lot about what's outside the universe. So, or is there an outside or what does this even mean? Mm -hmm. So and we can see these things to some degree. Like, I'm saying we can see the universe expanding, we can see old galaxies, new galaxies, we can see the spaciousness, but it's like, but there has to be something past what we can see, or, or what does that even mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, mm -hmm. I don't know, but it's an amazing thing. I mean, psychedelics also start to show you this kind of infinite quality of circles within circles within circles, in the same way that people come out of people, come out of people, they come out literally of the holes of people and so there's, we often see on this planet so above, or as above, so below, uh, with whether it's atoms to galaxies and structures and the golden ratio. So if you want to just trust in what we see, it would seem that systems are within systems are within systems forever. It's hard to say, but it looks to be that way. But I certainly don't know. So <laughs> if anyone tells you they know, red flag. <laughs> And then last question is, what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? Forgiveness and, and love. The fact that people can love you and forgive you. and That humanness and ability to love even in the face of all this absurdity and uh, mistakes is beautiful. It really is. And that's, that's the human capacity for love. That I'm sure is mirrored in animals and all these mm -hmm. things, but we have we think about it more, <laughs> at least I do, too much. <laughs> Issa, this has been such a good conversation. Thank you very much for coming yeah, on the show sure. and talking to us. Really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you for the incredible performance this morning and for tomorrow as we're really excited for it. Thanks, I'm glad I didn't have to, <laughs> to you know, play here. Some, That's some why we're in this room. Yeah. <laughs> what, where are the links that people can find you at? Uh, eastforest.org. Eastforest.org links in One the bio. Word, yeah, and it's social media, so it's either East Forest or East Forest Music. East Forest or East Forest Music on mm -hmm. social media. You can find those links below. And then is the album also on yeah. the website? 
Yeah, the Ram Dass record and the Music for Mushrooms record are both uh, on the website or anywhere you listen to music, Spotify, iTunes, everywhere. Wonderful. Okay, wonderful. All the links are in the bio, everyone. Check those out. Also, um, support people like East. Also, support consciousness hacking, support simulation, the artist, the entrepreneurs, the organizations around the world that you believe in. The links are below. And also, Talk to your friends, your families, your coworkers, people online on social media more about exactly what we talked about on the show. Get more conversations rolling about it. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Peace.